I truly believe that the heart of Christian education starts with its people. I'm a true believer in that. Growing up in Christian education myself, my wife and I grew up in Christian education. I went to public school early in my career. But growing up in Christian education, it really taught me that the heart of Christian education is not in the books. The heart of Christian education is not in the facilities themselves. The heart of Christian education is not in the uh, activities that we run. The heart in Christian education starts in relationships. And it starts in a commitment by long life learners who truly love Jesus Christ, who invest themselves in the lives of our young people. Total student growth has increased three years straight, 830 to start 2019. Re-enrollment currently is at 98% for 2021. Academic, the class of 2019, last year average SAT score is 141 points above the national average. Our ERB scores in reading, writing, math, quantitative reasoning is above the national average. Six million dollars in scholarships awarded to the class of 2019, 10 Palmetto Fellow scholarships. Our boarding program held 53 students of eight different nationalities. Let me say that again, 53 students, eight different nationalities, 14 students to a home. We are blessed with great house parents. Attitude, spiritual life, increased discipleship participation this year, enhanced chapel experiences and speakers that really speak to the hearts of what's happening in our country and in our students' lives. Increase in winter and service opportunities. Fine arts this year alone, aside from the fact that we ran our first musical, the guitar group increased by 12%, the band group increased by 48%, the choir, who just, you just saw, the Mr. Taylor Nelson, put together our first ever a cappella group, their first performance. I can only see great things coming from there. Our choir increased in 2019 159%. Theater, amen. <laughs> theater. I got my own cheering section up here in the front. Theater. Our theater program increased, 17, or increased by 17 students, 34%, and visual arts program increased by 37%. Our athletic program, state championship 2019, our track and cross country team were state champions. State runner-ups, our baseball team, state final four, volleyball and football, and dozens and dozens of individual award winners. And we also had the Skiza Tennis Player of the Year. And our advancement team raised, total, do total donors was increased, total giving increased, new donors increased, alumni donors increased, and raised over $5 million in pledges and gifts. Let's give a round of applause to our administrators, faculty, house parents, staff, coaches, and their work 2019. I truly believe that where we're headed, not only will your children be prepared for college, but they will be equipped for life. And as you can see, we have a plan and we will follow that plan moving forward. We also have clear academic initiatives that we will follow and we will move forward over the next several months and several years. When you look at the academic initiatives that are sitting up here, I want to share with you that these initiatives, again, are very much prayed over. But we want to make sure that your children are prepared for the next level of their education. When we look at these things, we always have these discussions amongst our administrative teams. You know, what really do students need to be successful? At the lowest level? in the middle school and at the high school. And we understand that Ben Lippin School has shown some tremendous growth over the last several years as far as families coming to us. And so now we have to think like a big institution. No longer can we think like a small shop. We need to think how do we really prepare our students for the colleges of their choice and their families' choices so that the day they leave Ben Lippin School, they know they're ready when they step onto the college campus. One of the things that I want to share with you is that we want to continue to invest most in what matters most. You've heard me say that before if you've come to a coffee meeting or a talk. We want to continue to invest more in, uh, most in what matters most. Time, treasure, talents. We want to invest in people. Leadership. This year we'll be investing in middle school director of academics to continue to strengthen the academic program in our middle school. 
We want to invest in assistant AD, communications coordinator, diversity and inclusion coordinator, because we value the differences amongst our young people, and we need them to understand that their differences make us better. We also want to make sure that we continue to invest in internship and community engagement coordinator. We need to bring people in that are going to reach out to the community and bring partners on board and make sure that our students are prepared by being able to have hands-on learning experiences in the community by bringing partnerships that our young people can then go and do some more internships that they can grow themselves so that they, when they get ready to go to college, they understand and they truly get what they want to do and how they want to be productive as they move forward. I just want to share with you that we're going to continue and we have invested in our STEM program, science, technology, engineering, and math. You saw the investments already if you've walked by. The robotics program continues to grow. We have one of the top robotics program, robotics teams in the state. And that program has taken off very quickly as far as participation as well because of the rooms and the spaces that have been provided for them. We also want to continue to invest in our dual enrollment program. Give our students an opportunity in partnership with Columbia International University to expand their learning opportunities and take classes at the college level with college credit from excellent professors. We want to expand our new technology. And let me stop and share this with you for a minute. One of the things that we are doing and we're really praying about, and I'll share it with you tonight because you're here, so we're really praying about moving away from iPads. I share that with you, and all of you are going, <laughs> but I share that with you, not that we're moving away from technology. We understand the investment that we need to continue to make in the lives of our young people with technology. We need to help them understand how to utilize the tools. We need to help them understand the importance of the tool and that what the tool can do for them. What we want to do is bring balance. We'll probably be walking away, most likely. Again, we're prayerfully considering it. We haven't made the final decision. Walking away from our iPads and going to our Chromebooks. The Chromebooks provide us an opportunity as a laptop to continue to practice a skill that many of our students have lost over the years. A lot of us spend a lot of time doing this, our young people. It's hard to write papers like this. And so we want to make sure that, again, as we refocus our initiatives around our academics, that we help our young people how to do this. And as they do this and continue to write their papers and continue to move their education forward, hopefully and Lord willing, when they get to college, they'll do this really well. And so that is a plan that we have. The other plan, as far as technology is concerned, that I'll share with you tonight is that we're drawing back from the middle school, the iPads from going home. Uh, I share that with you because it has been a challenge for our parents. Uh, with middle schoolers taking iPads home and having those iPads at home and working and then controlling the atmosphere of those young people at home. And so what we'll do, again, we're not walking away from technology. I want you to hear me very uh, clearly on that. What we want to do is continue to invest, again, in Chromebooks, but we will leave them in the classroom for our students to come and check them out, utilize them in the classroom for schoolwork, and then put them away at the end of the day. And then we will work with you as families and our students and how homework will take place and those things at home. But we want to bring balance in the world of a middle schooler. And so we're committed to doing that. Let me share with you also that Ben Lippin, again, in the world of technology, Ben Lippin will, take it, will be taken and has already started to take a new step. Ben Lippin has opened Ben Lippin School Online. And what that means for us is an opportunity to continue to expand the opportunities that we provide here academically for our young people, but also provide them extra opportunities above and beyond what we can't currently offer them. So if your child is interested in taking two additional AP classes that we cannot hire two uh, AP teachers for, they can take those online at Ben Lippin Online. If they want to take extra honors classes that we currently don't serve right now, they can take those on Ben Lippin online. And if they want to take dual enrollment credit courses online, they can do that through Columbia International University in partnership and continue to expand their education and their online learning that way as well. And so we're moved, we have moved in that direction to one day, hopefully, if the Lord opens up doors, if our board agrees and we come together, to one day serve the nations with the gospel of Jesus Christ through Christian education in Columbia by using online learning at a high school level. And we're prayerfully considering that as well as we move forward. 
We also want to make sure that our young people understand that innovation is important. Life is changing. Creativity is changing the world today. And so in partnership with the high school principal and our director of our science programs, we are now looking at an innovation program, drone flight program. We're deeply looking into that world. We need some financial support on that. It's about a $8,000 or so dollar program. But by the time a student finishes that course, the idea is that they'll be able to understand and fly drones and get their flight lessons completed. And they'll have a license that they can flight drones and they can work for construction companies or other companies as far as zoning and other things that they can do to accomplish. And they'll leave here with something tangible that they can take with them in their education process. And so we're working very hard and trying to get all the details for that. It is about a $10,000 program, so we'll have to figure out how that works. And if one of you is really vested in helping us, we'd love for you to help us do that. Uh, but it's really in the best interest of our young people. The jobs of tomorrow are changing. And if we can provide in high school an opportunity where they can take something with them and they can really take that and say, you know what, I can do and I can minister through this job very quickly, that's a great opportunity and we want to provide that for our young people. So when you look at the pictures up here, you can see that as we invest in our programs, we continue to make sure that we also want to invest in our facilities. Programs can't just take place outside all the time. We need facilities and we need an opportunity to invest in those facilities. So as we continue to talk about investing and investing in facilities and what the future looks like, one of the things that I'll share with you is that we will continue as we have already, you saw in the video earlier, is number one, is continue to invest in security. We will continue to invest in the security at the SAR campus, Monticello Road campus. We'll continue to add signage for security purposes cameras and continue to light our campuses so that our children at night and our parents who are visiting at night feel safe when they come to our campus. We also want to make sure that we provide places of impact. We are renovating the Performing Arts Center at SAR. The Performing Arts Center at SAR has been shared with a church and now it's becoming in this summer it'll become our own place and so we will make that the best possible Performing Arts Center so that our young people can continue to expand their opportunities in the arts. Uh, we have great plans for that. Uh, we have a great team leading that. And we look forward to this upcoming year when we spend some time this summer renovating that area so our young people can really uh, be successful as far as their theater arts in there. As you see, our campus master plan was complete. Our strategic plan is complete. Our phase one project is complete, our arts and science center. That was a $5.5 million project. We've raised over $5.2 million already. And currently on the table, we have a $100,000 match from a grandparent. Not even from Ben Lippin School, but he has seen the growth and he has seen the impact that Ben Lippin School has made. And he, wants to, he wanted us to say, here's $100,000. If you can get this match, we'll provide you $50,000 at a time if you can do that. And so as we finished off our Arts and Science Center, our next possible facility that's coming up that we're prayerfully considering, it's a Life Impact Center, a Student Life Impact Center. That Student Life Impact Center will be right here, letter J, and you guys can see this at the end, but it'll be letter J. And it provides us an opportunity to be able to reach and give our young people a place to go after school a place where they can hang out in a safe environment, where they're not just roaming the campus, where they can wait for you as parents, a place where they can play pool and they can play ping pong and they can do their homework, a place where it's one location, both international students and day students can come together. But more than that, it's a place where we want to provide resources, just like we talked earlier. We want to provide the resources for our students where they can have their counselors, their academic counselors, their general counselors, their diversity counselors, a place where they can have all their internships, meetings, a place where we can host meetings just like this on our campus at Ben Lippin School. Before I move there, I just want to share with you that as we close the Arts and Science Center, we're not finished raising the funds for that project just yet. That $100,000 match, we're hoping that we can close by June 30th. And that $100,000 match is right out there. And if we can get that match done, 
We only have about $70,000 left to accomplish the goal a year in advance. That in itself is amazing, and we're thankful that God has provided that opportunity for us. So if you are interested in that, I know that someone here says, I want to be a part of that. I want to get you to the match. On your way out, our team will be ready with pledge cards for you. I'm sure they have some in their pockets that they'll provide for you. And if we can close the gap on that, then we can move our vision and our direction to phase two. And phase two is about a $1 million project. How quickly we can do these things depends on the resources above and beyond. How quickly we can do these things depends on the resources that come from our families, our communities. And as soon as those resources come, the plan is ready. We want to invest and continue to invest. So let me share with you in closing. The state of our school is strong. It's never been stronger. But we're not done yet. We're not even close to finish. We are just starting and moving forward with clarity in our vision. We want to make sure that when our time here on earth is done, Ben Lippin has a strong future for years to come. And that strong future starts with people. It's the investments that we're making, not for the facilities themselves, but it's the investment that we're making in the lives of our young people and young families that are committed to Christian education. We want to provide a Ben Lippin school that will be here for years to come for them. Because at the end of the day, it's the prayers and commitment from past parents who are now grandparents and new young families who are committed to providing Christian education for our newest Falcons for many, many, many more years. That's what makes Ben Lippin School a special place. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless your family. And may the Lord continue to bless Ben Lippin School. God bless you and thank you for being here. <laughs>